Well, for the poem with the mango seasons, or like black women with polish calls, I was, it was actually my sister's hair because she had already washed her hair and it was like in these bento knots, I think that's what it's called. And I just couldn't help comparing it to the mango tree that was like full with blossoms and stuff. So I thought I'd write a poem about the mango tree and how it relates to a black woman. And what inspires me to write in general? Well, I can't say it's one thing because for me to be inspired, I need to be distracted because for some strange reasons, inspiration always comes when you're not focusing on it. So I'll be in my kitchen washing up wares and then my neighbors arguing, I'll get a piece of like an idea, a story, a word, and then I'll just build on it and build on it. That's how inspiration comes for me. When I learned to write, I guess, so um, it wasn't one of those grand dreams for me. I never thought that I, you know, when I grow up, I want to be a writer. Through primary school, I wanted to be a detective, actually, and then it changed to wanting to be a doctor or a lawyer. Um, but when I got to college, some friends and I formed this poetry club and it was called Poetic Justice and it was around Valentine's and she told us to submit a love poem and I no experience with love. <laughs> so I just sat and I just wrote about what I thought, what I think love should be like and I submitted it. It was just, you know, like a freestyle. And then she messaged me and told me that it was one of the best poems she have ever read about love. And I was like, wait, what if I, what if I can write? What if I, what if I'm a writer deep inside? And I just started writing more and more and just like any cut of paper I see, any, anything, I, any chance I get to write, I'll write. I have like tons of books, scraps, pieces of paper stuffed in anywhere with just like words on them. And for some reason they make me feel like me they make me feel free so it's something I like doing my favorite writers are well Derek Walcott for one Emily Dickens William Shakespeare Lorna Goodison those are my favorite um but Derek Wal also Derek Walcott is like to the top of the list because he, one of his quotes um I was going through you know random quotes one day and I saw a Derek Walcott quote and I was like it says that if you know exactly what you're going to write about when you begin writing, it's going to be average. So it's like when the Walcott writes, it's like pieces, bits and pieces that comes from anywhere he puts into his poems. And average is something that I'll never want my poems to be. I'll say it's narrative because I can tell a story and that's exactly what life is, a story. So writing narrative, I can just take an idea and form it into a story because everything for me is a story and I like telling stories. I am currently working on a book of poems. I want one to be about my childhood, one to be about my teenage years, and one to be about my adult life. So I also want to incorporate my art into my poems. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'll, I'm looking forward to it myself. Hopefully I'll get to share that with everyone if it's a success. Deadly Emotions by Don Cobalt. It speaks to the fact that our mental health has a lot to do with our physical body. So. Certain, certain diseases is because of how we are mentally. Right now I'm reading Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Speaking because I myself am an introvert. It's by Susan Cain. Um, I'm also reading The Principles of Anatomy and Physiology, so I'm not really deep into that yet. But hopefully I'll get into it because the holidays are coming up, so I'll put aside the anatomy for now.